Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Our mayor is in Peru, so I will be running the meeting tonight. Tonight is our regular scheduled meeting for the city council. It's Tuesday, September 3rd, 2019, 6 o'clock. Can I have roll call, please? Yes. Council Member Krause? Here. Council Member Lopez Ortega? Here. Council Member Williams? Present. Vice Mayor Dunsford? Here. And Mayor Canning? Absent. Absent. If you would all please stand, uh, join me to the salute to the flag. Next, we have oral communications. <clears throat> uh, oral communications is reserved for items that are not on the agenda. Uh, this time is set aside to receive comments from the public regarding matters on the consent calendar or matters of municipal concern not on the agenda. Pursuant to Government Code Section 54954.3, the Brown Act, However, the council cannot consider any issues or take action on any request during this comment period. Speakers are encouraged to limit their comments to three minutes so that all speakers have an opportunity to address the council. So if you like, you can uh, fill out a speaker card and uh, give it to the city clerk. Um, otherwise, you're still welcome to just walk up to the podium. So I do have several speaker cards. Uh, again, it, if you want to speak regarding uh, the sirens, then you can reserve your comments to item number 11. So Brian Fennin, you wanted to speak about the sirens, is that correct? So hold off till item number 11? Okay. Dennis McNay. And if you so choose, just share with us your name and your address, but you are not obliged to do so. Hello, Dennis. Good evening. Dennis McNay, 2653 Foothill. Uh, gee, everybody shows up when the mayor's out of town, so we get a chance to talk. Is that <laughs> how it works? Anyway, I don't know if uh, how many of you saw the article last week in the Napa Valley Register about traffic lights, but there's an article, and uh, they... <clears throat> claim that uh, the number of people killed by drivers running red lights is at a 10-year high. It has increased the death rate in these accidents at red lights to 28%. Normal accidents have increased 10%. Nobody knows why this happened. AAAs looked into it. <clears throat> and uh, the uh, federal people have looked into it. And they just don't know why this happens. But Calistoga, in their infinite wisdom, is going to stall one of these death lights at the corner of Petrified Forest and Foothill. And I personally don't think it's a very good idea. Somebody's going to die in this town, and other people are going to know them, or they might be your relatives. The odds just aren't in favor of a light. Now, I don't know how long ago it was, but there was a light put in at uh, Deer Park and Silverado Trail. And that light blinks red constantly. As far as I know, it's never been activated, unless maybe early on when somebody died there. But this is what's going to happen here. And I don't know why we're going to spend all this money on traffic lights that are going to be doomed to be flashing red. If you want to put a flashing red light in the center of the intersection, like Lincoln and Foothill, fine, but I don't think traffic lights are going to solve the problem. I think part of this problem that was in this article comes from the fact that when traffic gets heavy, city councils install traffic lights, and apparently that's not the solution. 
I think you better relook at this whole situation before it gets out of hand. Thank you. Thanks for your comments. Charlotte Williams. Hi, Charlotte Williams, 59 View Road. Um, I have a request for the City Council and City Manager, and that is if the City could post notices on next door, very much like the um, Napa Valley Transit Authority does or the Sheriff's Office, um, Office of Emergency Services, and various other state um, officials occasionally post on next door and I really appreciate that and particularly in the case if it's an emergency or an urgent situation or a, a notice that could be posted in the papers and maybe legally has to be posted in the newspapers but is of widespread interest and it just seems that this in this day and age when many many people are on social media that um, the city could make use of something like next door. Um, I did speak at length with Christina Lee, who is the communications officer of Napa Valley Transit Authority when she was stuck in traffic between Napa and her home in Fairfield. And she said that she thought it was very easy to use. She didn't really think somebody had to be a communications officer to use it. Um, so not complicated. She said what it allowed her to do is to put out messages, but she could not see other messages that were in the communities. She just puts out her messages and she can only see if somebody replies to her. Um, and I realize it's a, um, it's, it would take up time. It may be a whole never, another position. I'm not asking Irene to do that on top of everything else, even though she th thought Irene could do just fine. But, um, for if there are many messages or in a regular sort of manner, or certainly in the cases of emergencies, if somebody could be maintaining city communications with the community. Um, um, let's see, let me see if I thought of anything else that I'm blanking out on right now. But um, yeah, I don't, and I don't know if it's just a, a, pro, a matter of changing communications protocol within the various departments in the city or if it would require a whole other person to do that. But I would really appreciate that. And I'm always glad for those messages I get um, from the county offices that tell me if there's a road closure or a road bus schedule change or something like that. It's useful and certainly in an emergency it would be very, very helpful. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Charlotte. <laughs> Uh, next, I have Michelle H. Sir. Hi, Michelle. If you like, just give us your name and address, but you don't have to. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michelle, resident of Calistoga. I have noticed the crosswalks near the schools are lacking or not consistent. The 2014 Calistoga Active Transportation Plan states that high priority is given to safety improvements in the vicinity of schools. The 2016 Napa Countywide Pedestrian Plan states that the city of Calistoga generally considers crosswalks at high volume activity centers, especially near schools. So then why isn't there a school crosswalk at Lake and Fairway? Per Google Maps, it's about 350 feet from the high school. The school crosswalk at Berry and Cedar is yellow striped, whereas the crosswalk at Washington and Berry is yellow, but not striped. The school crosswalk at Grant and Lake is also not striped. Since we are on the subject of pedestrian safety, are there plans to put a crosswalk in front of the fairgrounds at North Oak and Fairway? I've seen people almost get hit by cars at that intersection during the mass exodus from high volume events. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next I have Sally Hawk. Hawk. Hi Sally. Actually, I was going to comment on my, excuse me, my name is Sally Houck, and I live in Rancho de Calistoga. 
I was going to comment on the communication, but uh, the earlier comment was when I was living in Texas uh, by Bryan College Station, there was a chemical warehouse fire. And uh, all of the landlines within, and I don't know what the radius was, we got a phone call. And it was from, I would have said, somebody that would have been recognized uh, like a supervisor or something or other in, in a government position. It was a recorded message, but it came out almost immediately telling them, this is exactly what it is, and this is uh, what the situation and what you can do, and uh, identified uh, some uh, places to go if you felt uh, threatened or in jeopardy because of this chemical warehouse fire. I don't know how they did it that they were able to get that telephone going and with a recorded message about that particular incident. But it certainly was, one, reassuring, and two, it was very helpful. Not all people have cell phones or the next doll or on their computer, uh, whatever, but, you know, even with landlines, as far as uh, what Charlotte said, would be very helpful. And if I might just take another little minute here sure. about future uh, resort or uh, housing developments, I would encourage the council to maybe put on hold any future developments until we do a study of the impact of those that are already in existence or coming into existence as to what it has on our infrastructure, what the impact is going to be on our sewers, what is going to be impacted on our water and our traffic situation. But before we bring in a whole bunch of other developments, let's see what these developments are going to impact uh, the residents of Calistoga. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Larry Croman. Larry? Oh. Ingrid Estrada. Hello. Hello. Thank you for listening to me again. I think this is the second or third time I'm up here talking about the need for telecommunication ordinances. Uh, the one silver lining that's come out of all of this cell phone siren tower situation is that it has surfaced the need for some telecommunication ordinances. And I've gone into some details in the past about the uh, distributed antenna systems and the densification of microcells that's going to be becoming more and more common. And again, this is all around trying to help preserve the charm, the views, the residential areas, forcing some of the uh, telecommunications service providers to make sure that if they are going to use some of our infrastructure that they do provide the guaranteed services as a result. Um, and again, uh, I've said all of that before, so I won't go into all that. My request today is to please um, be put onto a future agenda, hopefully in the next two, two to four weeks. And also to note that there are uh, many uh, concerned, concerned citizens that would like to be part of some sort of an advisory group as well. Thank you. That's all I have for speaker cards. I have other speaker cards for item number 11, so I'll get to those when we get to that item. But is there anybody else that would like to speak under oral communications on an item that's not on the agenda? Okay. So we'll move on to the adoption of the meeting agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Council requests and ideas for discussion. Council Member Williams. Uh, I have a couple, a couple comments uh, tonight. Uh, one of them is uh, what Inga just met, mentioned, so thank you for bringing that up. 
I'd like us to uh, look into developing a telecommunication ordinance. Um, I see that tonight we're going to uh, affirm the U.S. Uh, Constitution, which is a, a good idea. Glad to see that. And I was reminded <coughs> uh, by a letter of the paper uh, last week, which talked about our general plan, referred to our general plan. And so uh, it occurs to me that um, while we honor the Constitution uh, on our national level, that the general plan um, is uh, somewhat analogous to the Constitution on our local level. And it was developed by uh, citizens here, and it's a uh, it's a robust uh, document and thorough, and I think um, I want to draw attention to the general, general plan as a document that governs and guides Calistoga and that, uh, that we also uh, honor and respect that general plan as well. It's not immutable, but uh, it is an important guiding document uh, that embodies our uh, ideas and dreams for Calistoga. So the general plan is uh, important. And it's online, it's available, and uh, I wanted to draw attention to that. <coughs> Second, or next, uh, the police department was here a few times in the last few months uh, addressing uh, the topic of traffic, which came up um, a number of times in recent months. And a report uh, came out for their activity in August, uh, which shows um, and uh, a, a considerable increased attention to uh, addressing traffic issues in Calistoga. So I want to commend the uh, police department for uh, their response to the concerns of many citizens regarding the uh, traffic concerns in Calistoga. There are the uh, electronic flashing lights, for example, on um, or digital readouts on uh, Foothill and um, increased uh, citations of drivers, which is not really the object, but the increase of safety that is consequent upon enforcement is important. So I appreciate that the police department uh, is, uh, has uh, responded to the uh, community that way. That's all for tonight. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Council Member Lopez Ortega. Uh, just um, briefly to mention uh, what a great celebration was um, uh, put together by the Ad Valley Family Center here uh, last Friday. It was uh, the back to school night celebration, and it was great to see uh, so many agencies that most um, are located in Napa uh, to come here and, and let people know, let the parents, let the kids, that all the services available for them. So I just want to, um, you know, to celebrate with them the success of the back to school night. And, uh, and just to mention too that uh, the support of the city makes this possible because we get grants to the f um, family centers and they are used very well. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Krause. Yes, uh, to kind of go along with what uh, Councilman Williams just mentioned, uh, re report that uh, we received here on the city council is that within a two-week period uh, when the CHP started the uh, extra enforcement period they made about 90 stops and issued 47 citations many of them hmm? mostly from speeding and apparently most of these people are from Lake County anecdotally, then. anecdotally. okay all right we're not to casting dispersions on people who drive cars from Lake County uh, but uh, uh, I, I would guess that that isn't in lieu of our own enforcement efforts. That's correct. The chief has made it a priority of his staff to enhance traffic enforcement and monitoring of the situation, not only on Foothill, but Grant, Lake, and our other high-volume um, roadways. We're also looking at purchasing some additional um, flashing radar signs that we'll be deploying. These will give additional feedback to the driver, the words such as slow down versus just what their speed is. So we're, we're taking this seriously and we're, we're putting some effort to it. And we're paying with that with the revenue from the speeding tickets? Not entirely, but yes. That was my sense of humor, folks. You've, you've heard it before. 
Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, so anyway, uh, thank you very much. Uh, my, com my compliments to the CHP and the chief. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Uh, I have no further comments. So city manager's report. Just a, a couple of things. I'd like to um, echo what Ira said about the back to school night. Very well attended by the community. Thank you very much for everybody that came out. Um, a lot of support from the service departments. Animal control was there. Um, city staff was there. So I think it was a it was it was very good. Um, just a reminder: the ten tennis courts are currently being um, resurfaced. Uh, the work is scheduled to be completed next Monday, on the 9th. Uh, so they probably won't be available for play until a week from today. And then on the traffic issue, I believe that Yellow Rose uh, Development is conducting a traffic impact workshop uh, tomorrow um, right here at the community center. I believe it's at 6 o'clock. The public is welcome to attend. It's a, it's a developer-sponsored report out of the traffic impact study that was prepared for the development. Our That's all I got. Are we planning on uh, videotaping that or because uh, I could see some value perhaps of that going on to our website so that people who can't attend could go to that and see what was said? So we hadn't planned on doing that. This is a developer um, sponsored workshop. It's, it's not a city uh, sponsored. They're just borrowing our, our, our room. Uh, perhaps we could find out how much it costs and make I'll, an offer to the developer so that we'll, we'll reach out to Lee and see if she would like to do that great is, is this the only meeting or is there a there's, secondary a, there's a second one which will be in Spanish uh, next week I believe it's on the 12th okay. this is again a developer sponsored meeting um, it's not the formal public hearing for the for the project or for the um, development review it's just they're 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 taking out pieces of the project and and holding community forums for them so one might be the utilities one might be um, you know the, the visual aesthetics this one is on uh, the traffic study okay thank you thank you uh, next we have proclamations presentations and awards and the first item is recognition of jason tamani and jeremy campbell as newly promoted fire captains and i think chief campbell are you gonna are you or uh yeah i'll, I'll start it okay. i'll have the chief come out uh, <laughs> we're, we're very pleased and honored to have two um homegrown uh, firefighters and fire engineers being able to be promoted to uh, fire captain um, it's always special when you can develop your own uh, staff and, and bring them up and through the ranks. And it's just an honor to be able to present Steve and uh, Jason and Jeremy. So thank you, Steve. Thank you. Um, I'm extremely proud of both of them. And uh, it's not just a good old boy. You passed uh, you know, being here so many years, and now you're a captain. There was a whole career track that they had to complete. Councilman Krause knows how difficult it can be. There's numerous state certified classes that they have to pass and take. And there was a written test, a 100-question written test that was administered by uh, Gloria Leon. And uh, that was not an easy test. They had to study for that for quite a while. There are first captains, first official recognized captains in the department. And a group that surrounded them, they're, they're the future of the fire department. Or I'm just so proud of them. That's all I have. Jason and... Uh, Jeremy? Yeah, step forward and... <laughs> I'd just like to add, between the two of them, they have 28 years of experience. Con congratulations, guys. I know. Well done, guys. Congratulations. Thanks for everything you do. Next item, we have a 
proclamation recognizing Napa County Latino Heritage Month, September 15th through October 15th, 2019. Whereas in 1968, President Lyndon B. Johnson first recognized Hispanic Heritage Week, later expanded by President Reagan to one month and each successive United States president has continued this tradition of declaring September 15th through October 15th to be National Hispanic Heritage Month and who has called upon the people of our country to observe this month with appropriate respect, ceremonies, and activities. And whereas Napa County and Calistoga has a long history of welcoming immigrants and is home to a growing multi-ethnic and multicultural Latino population, including citizens originating from Mexico, the Caribbean, Central and South America, all of whom are welcome and very much appreciated. And whereas in 2014, the Latino population became the largest ethnic group in California, in Napa County and Calist Calistoga, the Latino population grew by 50% in the past 10 years. In Calistoga, this now represents 49% of our citizens, or approximately 2,500 people, and more than two-thirds of all public school students are Latino. And whereas the diverse Latino population of Calistoga and Napa County make a significant economic contribution and has other profound positive influences on our community, through their strong commitment to family, faith, education, hard work, culture, and service. And whereas Calistoga and Napa County, which thrives on the diversity and ingenuity of all our people, also depends on the continued support and success of our diverse Latino population. We will continue to be enriched by the transcultural contributions of our Latino friends and neighbors for many decades, decades to come, and we will continue to make efforts to create an inclusive environment where we can all thrive. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Michael Dunsford, Vice Mayor of the City of Calistoga, do hereby proclaim September 15th through October 15th, 2019, as Napa County Latino Heritage Month in the City of Calistoga. Um. Can I call um, the group of parents? There is a group of uh, residents here in Calistoga, the group of Adelante, and they would like to receive the proclamation and they might want to say something. Si pueden pasar los uh, del grupo Adelante, por favor, para recibir la proclamación. Y si quieren decirnos un, unas palabras acerca de su trabajo que están haciendo. Okay, hello, my name is Julie Garcia, 16, uh, sorry, 1812 Foot Hill Boulevard. Uh, you know, we're a group, Adelante is a group of uh, leaders in Calistoga. They were here to work with, for our town. So right now, uh, we're working through more recreation areas for our families. And lately, we're focusing on parenting, how to engage parents with the community and with schools. So thank you very much for this proclamation. We really appreciate You're welcome. that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> all right, next we have a proclamation proclaiming September 17th through the 23rd, 2019 as Constitution Week. Whereas the Constitution of the United States of America, the guardian of our liberties, embodies the principles of limited government in a republic dedicated to rule by law. And whereas September 17, 2019, marks the 232nd anniversary of the framing of the Constitution of the United States of America by the Constitutional Convention. And whereas it is fitting and proper 
to accord official recognition to this magnificent document and its memorable anniversary and to the patriotic celebrations which will commem commemorate it. And now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Michael Dunsford, Vice Mayor of the City of Calistoga, do hereby proclaim September 17th through the 23rd, 2019, as Constitution Week in the City of Calistoga. And I ask our citizens to reaffirm the ideals the framers of the Constitution had in 1787 by vigilantly protecting the freedoms guaranteed to us through this guardian of our liberties. Who will be receiving this one, Donald? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm old, I'm not a founding father, I'm not that old. Okay, great, thank you. All right, next uh, we have our consent calendar uh, items four through 10. Uh, does anybody want to pull an item from the consent calendar? I just want to pull item number eight, just for a comment. Okay. And I wanted to pull items number five and nine for the usual reasons that I pull donation items. Okay, so can I get a motion on items four, six, seven, and ten? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So we'll pull uh, item number five, which is a resolution accepting a donation from Matt Reed for a memorial bench and approving a budget adjustment in the amount of $2,970.70. Yes, the reason why I ask this to be pulled is uh, when we have a very generous uh, contribution like this, uh, and Matt Reed happens to be here, uh, that we thank him very much publicly uh, for that rather than just a couple of sentences in a uh, agenda that most people never read. So, uh, Matt, thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. So you I wanna would then make the motion that we accept. Okay. Donation. Is there a second? second. Uh, I second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Item number eight, uh, request approving the display of the flag of Mexico the week of September 15th, 2019 on the city's ceremonial flagpole. Um, just, um, you know, I want to, um, to say thank you to the city for, um, doing this for the, uh, Latino community and especially in the Mexican community. And I just want to emphasize one more time that we Latinos and Mexicans, we are a hard working people. We come to this country with a lot of dreams that most of us accomplished. We come to this country uh, looking for a better future for our kids, for our families, that um, sometimes they live in terrible conditions back in our country's uh, origin. But I just want to um, emphasize that, that um, and appreciate the welcoming of the community of Calistoga to all um, races here. And thank you. Thank you. And would you like to make a motion to? Uh, I like to make the motion that we approve the request. And I will second that motion. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Item number nine: a resolution accepting a donation from Calmart. Yes. Uh, this uh, Bill isn't here. Bill Shaw from Calmart isn't here, but uh, he is donating a substantial amount of money to our uh, swimming pool to buy some new mats over there and uh, uh, this money comes from the 10 cent a bag charge mm -hmm. uh, when you don't have your own bag and you get a paper bag and you know I, I would guess that Bill could put that into his pocket and in a couple of years take a trip to Hawaii instead of uh, donating uh, uh, the proceeds back here to the city and I think it's very gracious of him 
Uh, even if I told him I was going to uh, mention this here, uh, he's a very modest and shy guy if you don't know him. Um, uh, so I, uh, I want to make sure that he personally knows that this council uh, appreciates it. And again, because the consent agenda is the kind of a thing that a lot of folks don't pay much attention to, I think it's worth mentioning. So, And with that, I'd make a motion that we accept the donation. A second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Bill, if you're listening. Uh, we have no public hearing tonight, so we'll move on to general government. Uh, item number 11. This item is a consideration of emergency notification system alternatives and possible adoption of a resolution approving a budget adjustment for an alternative option. City Manager Kern. <clears throat> Good evening, Vice Mayor Dunsford, Council Members, Mike Kern, City Manager. Um, at the last council meeting, uh, staff was directed to bring forward um, a discussion and an item for discussion and possible direction to staff regarding standalone uh, warning sirens. Um, this has been prompted by you know the recent Tubbs fire and then you know the threat of ongoing fires and other emergency services. So we don't we don't view this as a, a fire alarm system, but as an emergency notification system, as we could be faced with floods, fire, earthquake or other natural disasters, or even some man-made ones where there might be massive wrecks on the uh, roads that would impede people being able to come and go. Um, we looked at various alternatives um, to implement some kind of a warning system, and I think a, a good preface would be that any system that we're talking about is just a, a component of a larger notification system. So we would envision a, a warning system being just that, kind of an advisory notice to people through some kind of an audible alarm that something is happening and they need to tune in to other media sources to find out what exactly is going on and, and what their options are for you know, action, either shelter in place, get ready to leave, you know, get your ready bag. Um, so it's not that we're going to try and program uh, the sirens to give out different signals for different events it's just you're put on notice that something is getting is happening please seek other media attention either the radio you know the internet watch for your nixle alerts because that's our primary uh, pushback um, out to the community a, a lady mentioned earlier about a notification system in texas that she was familiar with if i'm not mistaken that's what we call a reverse 911 so that's a pre-programmed message depending on what we think an emergency might be it's already in the can um, with the sheriff's department or oes and and we basically just tell them hit send for the calistoga uh, landline folks and it puts out a pre-recorded message uh, to let people know what to do so the different things that we looked at as being a component of this warning system um, you know what are the tools in our tool bag what can we what what can we implement relatively quickly and then what might be a little more long-term solution um, if any of you were in attendance with the public safety fair uh, that the county sponsored the end of June at the um, high school uh, the sheriff's department rolled out what they're going to be using for their notification system and rather than trying to put in sirens and you know big towers and, and those kinds of things uh, they've landed on programming all of their emergency response vehicles with what they call a high-low frequency. Um, it's basically that alarm sound you hear in the European cars, you know, the doo 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 doo. So they programmed all of their vehicles to broadcast that, and that's a, a relatively simple way for them to be mobile. They can go anywhere in the county with that with that notification um, system. Our police vehicles have been programmed with the same thing for multiple reasons. One. If we're ever called to be an active participant in a mutual aid, uh, we need to have our vehicles match what they're doing so that we're not sending mixed messages, if you will. Um, and it's also something that we could consider uh, implementing and rolling out here in Calistoga in that it's something that's already, we already have it. It's, it's done and it's ready to go. 
Um, another alternative that we looked at was possibly um, reactivating or repurposing uh, the old siren that was at the fire station um, prior to the new station being constructed. Um, I've never heard it go off, but I've heard from rumor that it was quite loud and you could hear it from one end of town to the other. Uh, we purposefully kept that in our inventory. Uh, we kept it hidden and kind of undercover because we didn't want anybody to have wild ideas about maybe turning it into an art project or something like that and uh, not knowing what you might need to do with it. Um, we had some electricians look at it last week. Uh, they put power to it and it is functioning or it's functional. Uh, so with a little bit of elbow grease and some planning, uh, we believe that we could um, repurpose that uh, somewhere in town. Um, right now we've kind of landed on uh, top of Mount Washington next to the water storage tank for a couple of reasons. Um, the siren does take three-phase power, so it's, we don't have three-phase power everywhere, uh, but we do have it up there. And by having it up there, it's in a secured location. And I believe that given the elevation of that <coughs> hill or mountain would allow for that sound to be uh, propagated fairly, fairly far throughout the, the upper end of the valley. Um, given that it is, does appear to be functioning, uh, we think we can put that into service for something in the range of less than $20,000. We're probably going to go ahead and do that uh, just as a backup um, system not knowing where we're going to land with the rest of this stuff, but it's always nice to have more than one uh, tool at your, your, your resource. Um, the next one that I think we'll want to spend a little bit of time on, I'll probably skip three for right now because that's where we're going to spend probably the bulk of the discussion. Um, the last meeting, Vice Mayor, you, you suggested maybe renting uh, some morning devices. Um, when we met with the, the signal company last week, um, Chief Campbell and I, we did ask them about rentals. Um, they said they really don't do that. Um, if there's a need for a short-term use, they have a couple of sirens that are mounted on um, trucks. I think it's the same siren that they brought up to do the demonstration model that they can lift the aerial um, tower and then they elevate the, the siren. Um, he said, if you had a onesie twosie, need, they could probably get a vehicle up here and let us do that. But for a long-term deployment, um, he said it's really not going to be cost-effective for you to try and do that. So it may be possible, but I don't think it's going to be cost-effective, so we're not even going to recommend that. Um, the other alternative that isn't an alternative anymore is was to um, wait for the conclusion of the illumination technology um, application and, and see where that landed. Um, on Wednesday of last week, um, I received, and I believe you all received, a letter from them um, withdrawing their formal application for the non-routine encroachment permits. Uh, they were very complimentary to city staff and the assistance that we were affording them in, in trying to let their project happen. Um, but they, I think, were resolved that the there wasn't sufficient enough support within the community for them to continue their their application. So that alternative is not an alternative anymore. So that leaves us with a standalone system, uh, which would be comprised of basically wooden poles um, at select locations throughout the community, um, which would provide, again, that warning sound um, Initially, um, last year when the um, fire chief met with the, the vendor, they looked at the possibility of a two location uh, system and that's what's in your, in your staff report. Um, one location was down by the um, Public Works Corporation yard and the other location was somewhere out Greenwood and Grant area. That provided fairly good coverage throughout the community. It didn't go up into the hillsides and it looked like there were some, I'll call them, they're not quite dead zones, but in the core area of town on Lincoln Avenue, the, the decibels would be something less than 80. Um, 80 was what they said would be something that would be discernible uh, to the human ear that is higher than ambient background or maybe even some, 
some low rumble um, background. What you want to do is have a differential between what might be going on around you and, and what the warning sound is. Um, last Friday, the chief and I met with the, the company's representatives and we, we talked to them about maybe a three pole configuration. And that's um, the sound contour map that Irene has on the screen. Um, it does provide very good coverage uh, through the town. Um, the tentative locations that we selected were one, the Public Works Courtyard, one at the pool, and then another one at Grant and Greenwood. So pretty much the same as the two pole configuration, but we've put one in the middle of town, and, and that really um, increased the robustness of the message um, delivery. We got a cost estimate from them to put that three siren system in. Um, it's just under $120,000. For three? Um, for three. Uh, for four of them, it's about 160. So we, should your council direct staff to move forward with a standalone uh, system, we have a draft resolution for your consideration that does a couple of things. Um, primarily, it uh, approves a budget adjustment transferring money from the general fund reserve to a new capital project uh, for the installation and then direct staff to move forward with with the installation of that uh, there's also a finding uh, for CEQA that this is not a project in and of itself and that it isn't subject to CEQA and that we get it done um, the lead time uh, for delivery and installation um, is something in the range of 10 to 12 weeks. Um, so that's probably the best we can do, and that's partly why we wanted to explore repurposing the old siren and, and have, having something in place sooner rather than later. Um, so that, that's pretty much um, the analysis that we went through. Um, I believe that a three uh, siren application with the old siren at Mount Washington would be a, a fairly um, robust and effective um, emergency notification system. Uh, Steve has been looking at different ways to reach out to individuals. Um, we know that the Nixle is a very effective system and that's, that's used by um, law enforcement. That's going to be our primary a mode of getting the message out. Uh, we'll look at the reverse 911. Um, we're also looking at a, a low power um, AM radio station that would be dedicated just for emergency broadcasting. Um, I don't know if you've, you've probably seen like when you're traveling down the highway and Caltrans has the little signs that say for road conditions tune into AM 530 we would probably find a frequency down there, you know, in the 500 range that would just be strong enough to get out to the general um, area. Uh, we've looked at um, making available um, to those that are that need financial assistance, a small um, AM FM radio has a hand crank on it. You don't need to worry about plugging it in. You can plug it in, but it has a hand crank that will you know, recharge the batteries in it as a USB port for charging your cell phone, has a small flashlight on it. We think for a nominal, you know, investment, we could we could push those out to the community that need them. Um, something in the range of fifteen or twenty thousand dollars. It it just is one more tool in our ability to to have a, a local messaging system that that people can turn to. Um, and then he's also looking at um, a platform that was developed by FEMA um, as part of that package that you sent me they've they've stepped up um, a, a notification system that's basically GIS based and um, digital based um, they have partners with vendors that actually take their non proprietary technology uh, tweak it a little bit and then sell it back to the community for, for a nominal investment that helps to get that message out in a very clear and concise manner um, Notwithstanding everything else that we do with our local law enforcement and our mutual aid folks, um, we're recommending that the three Simon approach is probably where you want to land. So with that, I'm here for any questions. And since we've got a large audience, you may want to 
open it up sooner rather than later. Uh, any uh, council members have any questions at the moment? Yes, do we have an estimate on the cost for two sirens, two new sirens? I see we have a diagram, uh, the contour. <clears throat> it, it would be probably in the range of about $85,000. Thank you. I uh, appreciate all the work that was uh, uh, that the staff has done uh, on rather, I shouldn't say short notice because it's kind of been in the hopper for probably a year and a half. But um, one thing as you were talking about the lead time to put in the standalone uh, system from federal, uh, in the third page of Illumination Technologies uh, withdrawal letter to us, in the next to the last paragraph, uh, they are offering, uh, I guess, to sell us sirens that they already have on order. And the sentence says, as it is in line with the spirit of our company, we remain open to assisting the Calistoga Fire Department to secure a siren at their facility as soon as we receive ours from the manufacturer. So uh, it could be that that 12 to 15 week timeline could be shortened up somewhat by utilizing the offer from uh, Illumination Technologies to, uh, I would say, purchase the sirens that they already have on order, if that's in fact the case. So I, I'm not going to try and wordsmith what, what they wrote, but I, I interpret their offer to be a siren, a siren to be located at the fire station. So, okay. Um, we, we have had some preliminary discussion with them. Um, and I'll just say that it, it, it's there's still an opportunity that may present itself, but it didn't. At the then time, it didn't feel um, quite as warm and fuzzy as I would hoped it would have been. Not to disparage them, but um, we did talk to uh, the federal vendor, and he said the the trading of widgets happens all the time. Um, we would, if IT was receptive, whatever we decided we wanted to construct we would borrow theirs and back order to backfill um, whatever we ordered. And it, it would just be a, a little bit of a lead lag time that okay. they would just see behind the curtain. Yeah, but whatever we could do to shorten that time up, should the council decide to go with the federal sign, federal signal program. Um, with repurposing the old warning siren, uh, the old fire siren that we have, um, two things come to mind. One is that um, uh, if you have a public safety power shutdown, it isn't going to work unless you have standby power that's three phase up at the reservoir. Well, we do have standby generation that is three phase, and that's what we tested the siren on. Great. All righty. Good. <laughs> so it, it, when we... <clears throat> I was the fire chief when we put the new standby power in over at the fire station, and that generator was specifically oversized so that we could run that siren. Correct. So there's that, I, and I think that's a good idea. Um, and I'm sure you also somehow located the uh, controller for it. We did not. Um, in speaking to the chief, he thought that the controller was more for individualized messaging, and and that's why it had different different switches. Yeah, it, it if you um, Steve's been in the radio room over there, the old station, when that thing would go off, and there'd be a huge clunk when the uh, uh, thing would uh, trigger, and uh, uh, and it was actuated by the uh, tones put out. By uh, that set off our pagers and, and like that, so there may be a little bit of of work there. But I I I, I think repurposing that old siren up there is probably uh, a good thing. Then um, to kind of talk a little bit about reverse nine one one, it is a good system. The problem is is that it is dependent upon the switching facility, and it is. You know, your first couple of dozen messages go out, but uh, you have to have phone lines for all of those things, and it takes a while to go through 
uh, maybe a thousand or so homes. I don't know how many you can notify at once, but um, uh, there are some drawbacks to the reverse 911 situation that Nixle doesn't have. So, um, uh, but all of these things are uh, good. You do need notification in depth. I, I did make the suggestion uh, that we investigate a low power radio, AM radio uh, situation. Um, uh, the uh, Sutter County uses such a system uh, because they have uh, the county surrounded by levees uh, that protect it from the Feather River and the Sacramento River and the bypass and all that. And when they get really high water uh, situations, um, leaks can develop and they need to be able to evacuate people and tell them where to go and how to get someplace. And you can't just say, if we have a leak in the levee, always go south because the leak may be south. And that's kind of the same way with a fire. You can't say we're evacuating town or stand by to evacuate, but you've got to be able to tell people where to evacuate to and what roads to use. I don't know of any cars that are sold today that don't have an AM radio in them. And, uh, if you're doing an evacuation, it would be very simple just to go to that radio station, uh, if you think of it, uh, in your car, and then you could get uh, that notification. The AM radio station could also be used for exactly what Caltrans does. There's traffic problems in certain areas. There's roads that are shut down. Chains are needed on Highway 29. There's all kinds of other things that could be done with that. Uh, uh, as well as um, uh, transmitting uh, public service messages that uh, we may need to uh, put out there for less than emergency situations. So I, I applaud the work that you're doing. I just want to let the listeners know and the folks in the audience here that uh, approving a siren system uh, is not the end all in uh, keeping you safe. Um, it's just one of the first phases and there's still going to be a lot of uh, work for you to do in having a family escape plan and all those things that they're advertising on TV and that you're seeing in the newspaper and, and like that. So uh, that's kind of me up on my soapbox right now. Um, and I'll have some more to say after we've listened to some public comments perhaps. A uh, quick question: the uh, so the rental concept is is would that be with the same company that's selling us the sirens? Is it the same? The, they're the ones with the portable the trucks and the portable Correct. sirens. Yes. So my, my suggestion was that if we have a a twelve week lead time, and it's the same company and we're purchasing three new sirens, it seems like we could negotiate. Hey, if we have a PSPS situation, which PG&E is supposedly going to be giving us notice that we could get one or two of those sirens up here in the interim until we have the permanent sirens installed that's 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 what my okay. recommendation well, was we can we can circle back with them yeah. to see what the availability is and yeah. you know what the delivery time I might mean, be we just don't want the community to feel vulnerable right so and and that i think that's partly why we <laughs> You know, we wanted to reinforce the existing tools that we have um, with the, the sheriff's um, high-low frequency and that our vehicle's already programmed that way. Okay. Uh, Iris, did you have any? Um, just, um, if you can just clarify one more time the cost uh, for this um, uh, siren, uh, how much it will cost us. So four four sirens um, would be about one hundred and sixty thousand. Three sirens would be about one hundred and twenty. And two would be around eighty, maybe eighty five. And the funds they will come uh, from our general fund. That's where we've recommended that if we move forward, that that's where they would come from. Yes. Okay, and there is no grants available for this type of. Not. This, not on this short of notice, um, FEMA has off times emergency um, grant call for monies. We just got a notification today um, about some emergency preparedness uh, money. 
the process is lengthy. Um, you put your application in, it goes through the ringer for four or five months, and then you hope to get the call that, you know, your project is eligible. Um, generally speaking, the grants aren't reimbursable, so we couldn't go spend the money and then get reimbursed for those expenses. It's you have to be pre-approved before you make the expenditure uh, using their money. That's it. Thank you. Okay. So I'm uh, going to give, uh, he already, he already asked, uh, gives opportunity to uh, the public uh, to ask questions or provide comment. Um, I have uh, Veronica Silberman. And if you can, just try to limit your comments to three minutes and come on up. I'm Veronica Silberman at 1112 Spring Street. And I'm here hoping that you will reconsider, have, have reconsider um, opening negotiations with ITC or another comparable company. I think more that we need sirens, but we also need early detection um, to help save more lives in our community. And I just heard about, this is all kind of new to me, and what I was hearing about all this was just about the, the cell tower, not all what the whole company provided other than the cell tower. So I'm just hoping that you'll think a little bit harder in, about reopening discussions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Leslie Wilkes. I'm Leslie Wilkes, and I live on Cedar Street. Um, this is my keeping me on focus paperwork, so forgive me if I'm reading it. Um, I am surprised to read in the agenda that this agenda item is actually up for a vote tonight, um, especially since the ITC Alternative 5 withdrew just a few days ago. So um, if those who were opposed to ITC felt their proposal was rushed, I feel tonight's vote is rushed. I don't think we're ready for this. And after I've heard all of this, I feel even less inclined to want you to vote on it tonight. I encourage you to table it until there's more information gathered. I don't believe that any of the alternatives before you offer early detection in addition to warnings. They all seem like a notice that signals of signals that something frightening is happening. That's all it sounds like. It's just like, I won't say chicken little, the sky is falling, but it does sound like that's what we've got coming here. Alternative three with the fi uh, Federal Signal Company can't be implemented for 10 to 12 weeks. So all this delay has eliminated the possibility of sirens now, <coughs> now which I think is one thing everyone has wanted, sirens now. We can't get that. We've, we're already into the 10 to 12 weeks. I don't believe the public has been able to review any plans or seen the very precise locations of any of the other towers proposed. I know aesthetics were very a uh, concern to many of the people in the beginning of the ITC proposal, but now the aesthetics of the remaining alternatives are even more unknown to us. We don't know where really specifically where these towers will go and specifically what they'll look like. I think we knew more with ITC than we, than we do now. It also seems premature to allocate any funds at this time when you don't have the exact dollar amount for any of the alternatives before you, especially when ITC's proposal wasn't going to cost us anything. For any who were upset with Mayor Canning's connection to the ITC, he has consistently maintained the high road of detachment and has completely recused himself from any votes no one can dispute how much he cares about Calistoga. It's his home and his town, too. I frankly have found the suspicions insulting. There are many talented and qualified city officials, both elected and appointed, who contribute the benefits of their businesses and professions to the city without this much opposition. This has been going on for years. And if the rules and the laws are followed, as they have been, it's a win-win situation for everybody. I urge you to table the vote tonight. I urge you to communicate with ITC for their renewed involvement. I urge you to generate more citywide education because I believe there is a huge silent majority 
who wants early detection in addition to advanced warning. And this part is key to me. All the other proposals appear to be 1950s era solutions when we all did drop and cover drills. It sounds like ITC's proposal is the only one that incorporates 21st century technology. None of the current proposals will be, will be completed in advance of fire season. We're in it already. So there's no advantage to a rush vote tonight. Action tonight is premature. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I have uh, Donna Homer. Good evening. My name is Donna Homer. I live on Myrtle Street. And I've come, I'm coming late to this discussion, and I'm going to, to kind of admit that right off the bat. My concern is very similar to what uh, Leslie has just brought up. Um, the concern is not only the fact that there is no early detection, but I'm very concerned about people that possibly have hearing problems, people that possibly won't hear this because of a sleeping aid, or maybe because they're just not plugged in to technology. So my concern is not only an early detection, but secondly, some kind of on the ground kind of organization, like a neighborhood watch, to really help people that are cut off from the community, that are housebound, that may not be the kind of folks that are technologically advanced. So I would urge the council to please think about that from that standpoint. And maybe in doing that, we can have something activated for this season. Because right now, there could be a fire tomorrow, and we won't have anything in place. So I would urge you, and I think just judging from the number of people that are here tonight, that there are a lot of people that would be willing to volunteer. There would be people that would be happy to make sure that their neighbor is OK. So please, can we think about something like that? Can we go back to IT to see if they can reconsider and, and possibly bring back this idea of early detection? And can we do this now? I'm truthfully concerned about this year's fire season. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Donna. Uh, let's see, Molly De Brule. Hi, Molly. Hi. I'm going to defer my time to um, Marta because although I live in Calistoga, I'm towards uh, the Tucker Farm Center, so sure. it really doesn't apply to me as much as I wish it would. Uh, so I'm. Oh, uh, okay. she, she's just going to defer her yeah, time. Yeah, defer my time. I live yeah. right beyond the city. I mean, I live at Tucker Farm Center, so it really doesn't apply to me and to our residents. I wish it would. Um, so I'm deferring my time. OK. My name is um, Marta Neighbor. I live on Foothill. And my concern is also how fast we're rushing to do this. We're talking about spending an inordinate amount of money w on a system that doesn't cover everything, whereas the IT proposal did cover early warning and full communication coverage. So I really would like you to consider getting a hold of ITC and reopening the negotiations with them. I also believe that ITC's lead time is much, much shorter, maybe three weeks for the sirens, as opposed to the 12 to 14 for uh, the other company. So I hope you consider it. Thank you. Thank you. Brian Bennon. Um, thank you, uh, Brian Fennan, uh, resident of Calistoga. Um, a couple comments about um, early detection. I'll just because that came up here is that you know we have 5,000 residents. We've got 5,000 pairs of eyes, ears, nostrils to detect absolute best detectors uh, for fire. And that fire detection, I don't think, is an issue. 
it's uh, the Tubbs fire it was not about fighting the fire it was about getting out of the way and that was about warning systems so my comments um, basically I just to clarify and I appreciate the staff report read that I really appreciate the follow-up um, there uh, so we find out there's an existing system of mobile sirens that have been programmed um, with the county and the city I'm curious I did not hear if the fire department's vehicles are also programmed um, with the siren <coughs> To have a different different product, different model, right? Okay, so that's that's just a suggestion. I'm sure you're. Yeah, thank you for following up on that. Um, and then the uh, next question on that is: so we have an existing system. Are we going to test this system? Are we going to say September 30th, one o'clock? We're going to have this alert system so everybody knows what it they're, it's going to sound like. And I'm just I'm curious about that too because I know when I was a kid and well we used to have the noontime whistle or the noontime siren here right and when I was a kid we had the we had the air raid siren every Friday at one o'clock or whatever um, but I think that's you need to educate people about what it's going to sound like um, I appreciate that Mike actually mimicked that sound so um, <clears throat> that was good but um, it would be good if everyone could hear the system um, I have, over the years, I've lived here for 35 years, worked and lived here for 35 years. I've ridden my bike a lot. I've probably done a thousand loops around town. So I've been outside. I've heard the sirens way back when. I've heard the sirens, you know, police and, and fire. Um, so I kind of get the sense of what, what it is about here. Um, I was going to say, I like, intuitively, I feel like the two siren system is really good. One down at um, Public Works in one pool or the fairgrounds. Um, or three, I really, I, I also am aware that that's a couple months out to get something like that. At least we do have the mobile sirens. So I think you realize that your decision here is also goes, it's next year, it's going to be a few months out. Um, I like the one up on the, on the uh, Mount Washington, re reconstituting that old one. That old siren, remember, was removed um, at the request, as I recall, of Mayor Alexander. Um, he, he had his office 200 feet from that siren. So he had a personal interest in that, but he did say, I, I want that siren to go, and when the opportunity presented itself, it, it went. Um, I, I miss that siren. I don't always miss it, because, you know, when it, when it was busy days, but I do miss that, like that lunchtime siren. Um, but if it's up in Mount Washington, I mean, that's going to that's gonna carry some ways. So... Um, I think that's it. I'd, I'd love to see you take action on this. I'd love to see, I don't know if this needs rewording to be give uh, Mike the flexibility he needs to pursue this, um, but I'm game for reinstituting sirens in this town. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to come on up to the podium? Martha McCoy from Calistoga. If you could just lower the mic. Uh, there. there you go. <laughs> okay, I'm Martha Thanks. McCoy. And I, um, I just want to applaud the work that's gone into this and the thought um, on, the, on the part of the city and the coordination around it. I know this work isn't new. It's been being done over the past 18 months, and I really appreciate that. And I appreciate it in response to um, what has been proposed and withdrawn in terms of IT. <clears throat> and when we ended our last meeting, Mayor Canning appealed to us to move forward with sirens, no matter what was might be coming down the pike later. He said that at the last meeting. I feel like he was being genuine in that request. Um, <clears throat> IT comes as a package with cell, fire detection, and sirens on a system that is fairly intrusive. So we were looking at a lot of things fast and aren't being put into our neighborhoods. Wooden towers with sirens, we're used to that. We're used to that kind of environment. It's not a change in what we're doing. Yes, there may be some consideration about what's happening, what's being proposed. We have that information now. What I do, um, I am concerned about is, I think we all want fire detection. We used to have fire lookout towers and people manning them and watching for fires. 
um, there is a countywide, statewide, there are systems in place. I've been reading about it in the paper. I'm not even trying to find it. I'm not researching it. There are systems being developed and out that are already existing and out there for fire detection. So I don't think it's an either or proposition. I love that this includes using the old siren for backup. It's using um, three sirens to get the maximal coverage in the community. There's an open-ended still room to make sure we're covering all of that as it's playing out. And I also think there's another comment I have to make about the IT proposal is that the um, fire detection system was pr proposed to be placed up on Diamond Mountain Road <coughs> or up on Diamond Mountain somewhere and it was a system that's never been tested before. It was a pilot system. So there's a lot of research and background that needs to go into that before we would choose to adopt that. It's also a high-level surveillance system and I'm not sure what that means. So I just want to pose that there are questions. IT didn't have a done package that we could implement immediately to, to everyone's or to a majority's or to a city's decision at this point in time for fire season. So I would appeal to we pass this um, proposal as proposed by the city. We um, take council members' suggestion to look into possible getting it done sooner, whether it means negotiating, renting, short-term use of equipment while the more permanent equipment gets in place. We get the system in faster and we keep an eye toward what else is out there for our community's needs, whether it's on the street, in our homes, and, um, and for detection. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Would anybody else like to address the council? Come on up. I'm Don Lovisi, and uh, I'm on 36 Magnolia. You brought up a little bit of nostalgia for me because uh, when I was a kid, we never wore a watch out in the ranch because the siren would come at noontime, and it's time to come in and eat. So I'm kind of nostalgic on that. I think you can put that siren up on Mount Washington. I think you need a contour line for the sound off of that. Should be above the tops of the trees, presumably. And I think you're going to get a good fit with that. Then why not look at the situation of what you can do with one or two additional sirens to cover the area. And you should be able to get that Mount Washington one up there, what, in six weeks or less? Maybe two weeks. If it got power already, pole above the trees, ready to go. That's it. Thanks, Don. <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> Hello. My name is Carmen MacArthur, resident on Spring Street. Um, I remember being here about three years ago, right after the manhunt for uh, the guy for the uh, the guys from Windsor. I remember saying we need sirens then, so I heard this was coming up tonight. So I still stand by it. For those of you who are not aware, I was a network administrator, web administrator for the USA Air Force at Beale Air Force Base. I'm also a disabled veteran. And I will say, as I said last time, is technology is doomed to fail if you rely solely on technology. As a almost bachelor's degree in computer science, what happened during the Tubbs fire? My cell phone didn't work. Why? Because the AT&T tower up the hill got burned. Would have been nice to have something wake me up at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning when that blaze was going on. So whatever we decide to do, it needs to be able to wake at least some of us up. Granted, some of us have hearing problems. Then we can have a recall roster. Maybe we could start a roster through the fire department for people who have hearing problems. And then if there's an emergency, then just like in the military, you know, this person calls this person and this person, those people call those people, and we can if nobody picks up, then have a neighbor bang on the door. There are ways to deal with emergencies. There always are. The question is, is are we going to 
figure out how to do it sooner or later. Because this is a gosh darn nice little town. It's nice and quiet, and I didn't mind the noon siren every day at lunch. Shoot, that meant it was time for lunch, and I could get off of the high school campus for a few minutes. Granted, uh, I was always happy to go back from lunch to see people like Mr. Miller. I still remember one of the pieces of paper he had today on his file cabinet. Uh, Life is what happens when you're making other plans. That is so true. But anyway, so I don't take everybody's time. I am have to admit I'm not totally familiar with this ITC thing. I haven't been here for a while. I've been preoccupied trying to get my knee fixed that I screwed up uh, right about the time of the tub's fire. But um, I'd like to see sirens just because if all they need is a backup battery on site, that's going to be a whole lot more effective. It's going to reach a greater number of people in a quicker point of time. You can align it with Nixel so that you're send Nixel sending messages at the same time. The siren wakes people up. They look at their phones. They see the alert from Nixel explaining what the situation is. We go from there. It could be that simple. So whatever you decide, I hope I just gave you something to think about. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Hello. I'm back. <laughs> um, I want to uh, tag on to all of this um, communication. I talked, I don't know if you remember, I was talking to you several weeks ago, and, and Steve was telling me that when they go around to the meetings around the state, one of the main topics, if I remember you right, was communication. That that was absolutely critical. And during that Tubbs fire, he told me he could get a hold of the Verizon crew, but he could not get a hold of AT&T. We need more than one tower for our communication system. So if one goes down, another one is going to pick it up. But that communication is so, so critical. Um, whatever you choose to do, whether it's on a pole, a wooden pole, or um, the IT uh, towers, I really would encourage you to multiply the repeater stations that we have because if one is going to go down, we're going to have some communication. That is, as Steve would say, is probably the most important thing going. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Good evening. Lee Glowinski. I live on Foothill. I'd like to reinforce the uh, comments just made that I think communication is very important. More cell phone coverage would be a real plus if one goes down. There's a backup. Also, if there is such a thing as this improved uh, detection that IT was talking about, I think that would be very helpful. Uh, the siren is after the fact. The fire has started already. But if there could be something that I actually can see out in the distance, the smoke or the fire starting, originating, and getting that information in sooner than after the fact that it's a burning blaze and it's roaring through the valley. I think that would be very beneficial. And the other factor is the cost. When you start talking hundreds of thousands of dollars for a system, and the original proposal by IT was a donation, uh, how can that be ignored? So again, if you can re-engage with IT or any other companies that want to offer something to Calistoga, I think we should look at that. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Ivan Miller, Moore Avenue. I just want to, one, I want to congratulate the, you know, Jer uh, Jeremy and Jason. I taught those two a few years ago, and track I think Jason was on. Anyway, um, Moore Avenue. I just wanted to say the first thing is there is that alert wildfire cameras, and they've gone up everywhere. They're uh, I forget how many they say they're over 80. They're on Mount Saint Lenny. You can observe. Uh, it's early detection warning system already in place. It's a better technology than the technology that would go to Germany in 11 minutes, come back, and then notify a person. It tells the direction of the fire, the heat of the fire. I sent an email to um, the fire chief, Steve Campbell, and he's been aware of it a lot longer than I have and knows what he's doing. So I'm, I'm thanking you for 
doing all that as well. Also, I just think it's better that we don't go to the middleman. I think that the three uh, specific locations that are on that map right there that uh, our uh, city planner has looked at and the cost of them, um, I like that the city has control of it and that there's not a middle company in the, involved and that we know the cost. I like bringing up that old siren that we used to hear at noon. It's very nostalgic. And I think that it would be good to have uh, more than one system. And speaking of technology, just so you know, when the fire went off, my phone on AT&T didn't work either. I immediately switched it over to Wi-Fi calling on Comcast, and it, works, it worked just fine. So there are things that we can do to make our phones work. Although my wife's a little old-fashioned, she won't turn off that hardwire, my 942 number. So there's another thing to do if you really want the other, um, the hardwires ones. Uh, next all went off at 2 a.m. that night too as well. So there's lots of lots of things going on. I can't think of anything else I want to say except for that we do have early uh, fire detection in place and that ITCs, um, in fact, was 4G. It was old technology. It was not new technology. The early warning detection was old, not new. Uh, I think the way we're going today is the best way to go, not the not the um, the old with the old technology. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? If you can lower the mic. Has anybody considered the CERT training or having an auxiliary to the police and fire departments that would help with communication? Um, you could get your public to become trained and help pass out information and help pass the word, you know, block captains in different areas to help pass the word to maybe the neighbors that may be sleeping through alarms, may be sleeping through the siren, may not hear, may not understand, may not be technologically up to speed um, because communication is key. I. My husband was on the fire department when he was a volunteer. I sat in that office during a wildfire on Mount St. Lena, and I got a phone call from a lady. What should I do? And I said, is the fire department at your house? And she goes, yeah. I said, do what they say. And I, <laughs> are you packed? Are you ready? Well, when they say go, you go. Just follow them. And she talked to me for quite a while. There were no other calls coming in, so we had a great time. But communication is big. The other night in the mobile home park, my daughter was leaving. A siren on somebody, or an alarm on somebody's golf cart was ringing, and the lady had no clue. My daughter called me. We went over there. We were pounding on the door, because at first we weren't sure whether it was a smoke alarm, a CO alarm. We pounded on her door, and we go, can you hear that? She goes, no, I don't have my, fi my hearing aids in. And I'm going, okay. So we figured out what the problem was. We did call the fire department. But we need to have neighbors helping neighbors and maybe have an auxiliary to these where we are trained with CERT. I've looked it up on the FEMA. It's overwhelming on FEMA. But if we develop something in this community where we're helping each other, helping communicate, I have a scanner. I get calls all the time. What's going on? Oh, it's this. It's that. I had a scanner the night of the fire. I had 10 minutes to get out. Do you think I took my scanner? Oh, no. I stood next to a fire truck later. But you don't always get it. You have minutes to get out. And that wasn't my priority. <coughs> so I think we should look at doing some more for the community as a community to help ourselves. I keep hearing it from public officials to help yourself. There are so many, I can't remember what Supervisor Dillon said, how many um, firefighters or public officials there are to help per person. But it's like really out of balance. So we need to develop something ourselves through the help of the fire department, through Office of Emergency Services, through the council to build communication between us as a community where you have somebody that's going to get that information that's going to set it, the, the phone trees and stuff in place. I think that's where you need to build that tree is starting there. Um, I think that's huge. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Sharon Sir. I wasn't planning on saying anything today, but um, Ivan Miller brought up the point of the alert fire watch that I had no idea about a couple weeks ago. In fact, I agree with everybody who stood up here and spoke about the need for the early detection. I mean, that's definitely one of the, I guess, in my book, the only highlight that ITC's proposal really had. Um, so I, I pulled it up on my phone, and I see this map. And I can click on, well, first of all, this alert fire, wildfire.org is a network, university-backed, all across the state, really high-tech, ever-evolving. And I'm looking at the map on my phone here, and I could show you and everybody else. There's two on um, Mount St. Helena, and I'm looking at Calistoga right now, live. It's really cool. And um, there's a couple, I think, in the area of, like, Pepperwood Preserve, um, another spot near Santa Rosa, South Napa in the hills, um, over in Lake County, other player areas in Sonoma County. When I zoom out in the state, I mean, they're, these cameras are everywhere. And you can go on. The citizens talk about citizens taking responsibility. We can go on, and we could sign up if we want. We could have our own watch. I'm sure the fire department already is. But talk about citizens taking it into control. I can watch Calistoga right now. I, can, I, I believe these cameras even turn. Um, I, I heard somebody say that. I'm not, I can't operate that from my cell phone. But I thought that was really cool. And I find that really, um, I don't know, even just within the last week, learning of this, that it exists as a statewide system, university backed, that is high tech, and it is alerting fires, and it's already there, and it's free, um, backed by PG&E and Cal Fire. It looked like PG&E and Cal Fire both purchased the ones up there on Mount St. Helena. You can click on it and see. Anyway, I think that's really cool. And I am a big supporter of the sirens. I feel pretty safe knowing that this is um, available, this alert fire watch, and that all of our vigilantes here in town can be right on there watching those fires too from their phone if they have Verizon or whatever. They probably won't ever lose cell service. Um, and the only other thing I wanted to say that um, um, Mayor Canning, who I have great appreciation for, I consider him one of my friends, um, in discussion he and I had and I, it was also publicly made known that he did not have any carriers secured for these cell towers and that he was willing to take the risk of not, never getting a carrier on these towers. Um, he told me the, the likelihood of getting um, some secondary carriers, I think he mentioned Cricket Wireless or others, was a possibility. But we know that those who have Verizon and AT&T, we've got those big 125-foot towers in the fairgrounds. Um, that should they need to beef up their service, I think that we can ask them to do that. I'm not sure if having Cricket Wireless or, I, I mean, I don't understand the whole wireless thing too well, but I'm not sure that's going to make anybody's, or there's no guarantee that cell coverage is going to be better for everybody across the board because cell towers that may or may not have carriers on them exist. So, anyway, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Lorne Glame, I live uh, at the corner of Emerald and Money. Uh, I think we're trying to do too many things at the same time. It's a bit like the man who gets on the horse and tries to go four different directions. It's just hard on the animal and hard on the behind. So what we need to do is to unhook some things. We're not going to solve the dilemma tonight of what is the best communication. We're not going to change the state and its uh, attempts to provide early warning through everything from mountaintop lookouts to various kinds of new equipment that are going to be in the hills. We're not going to be putting on uh, these small smoke detectors with four volt batteries on 10,000 trees. We simply don't have the early detection and we don't have to have the time. Those who suffered from the fire had in some cases less than 10 minutes to get out the front door before the back door burned in. A 60 mile an hour wind is not going to give you any time except if you're warned by a siren to get out, to get gone. And that is simply the first priority that this group ought to look to tonight. Put in the two or the three siren system. 
let the community know there is danger. There is fire. It could be that there is, uh, as we had an alert for uh, some people who had come into town and were sought by the police. It could be that we have flood possibilities. We're not talking just about fire. We're talking about a system that says, be alert citizens, there is danger here. And that in itself is what I think you ought to be looking to tonight. A simple solution that you began at least a year and a half ago, and it is not something that you're just taking up tonight as was alluded to. It's been on the back burner for a long time. I think it's now time to go ahead and take care of it. And then the, <coughs> excuse me, the other solutions will follow. The communication is something that ought to be negotiated by this council and with various companies who will see what financial advantages there are here. And if it is necessary, they will come in with various things that you can be in control of. Not give up the initiative for 20 or 30 years to someone else to handle. You can do the negotiations. And I think the citizens will very much appreciate you doing that on their behalf. So let's not get so many different things going at one time here that you don't see sort of some kind of priority solution, starting with the sirens, moving on to these other things as necessary, and having some time to go ahead and do it. But we're now into the fire season, and this is the difficult time. When the winds blow, people get apprehensive. One spark. You will know it in a hurry. You don't have to have advance warning. It'll be there. So please uh, consider this not as something you're doing at the last minute, but something that you have been delaying for some time, and now you need to get on with it tonight. Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Joan Johnson. I live on Mountain Home Ranch Road just outside of Calistoga. Um, I just wanted to bring up two separate things. Uh, first off, uh, there were some speakers this evening regarding asking Illuminations Technologies to come back. Um, I would urge the council not to do that uh, for three main reasons. Mostly, there are just too many unknowns with Illumination Technologies proposal. Um, first off, as mentioned by Martha McCoy, this is a high-level surveillance system. It's not just cameras looking for fire. Illumination Technologies is a offshoot of a multinational company whose main job is surveillance. Um, second, I don't think that it's fair to ask citizens, I know it's an easement on their property, but to have a cell phone tower on their property um, or next to them. Um, and third, I, I think that to have a monitoring system that has cameras here that relays to Germany and then comes back here um, doesn't make a lot of sense when, as Ivan Miller mentioned and other people have mentioned, there's already surveillance systems and cameras here pointing at the Napa Valley um, that are very high tech and were designed to do this. Um, I would urge the council to go ahead tonight with the approval of one of these siren options, either two or three or four. Um, people have also mentioned that the cost is very expensive. You know, I think that the city's operating budget is somewhere around $9 million. Um, so to spend under 200000 to get these sirens up and running, I think, is a great investment. And that is it. Thank you. So maybe a, maybe a couple more comments, if there's anybody who hasn't spoken. My name is Tom Meyer. I live on Lake Street, Calistoga. I think if you went back to the videotape and listened to everything here, there's three common themes. Uh, imploring the city council to have a sense of urgency to do something. Number two, to take advantage of sirens, a, a known technology, and to investigate uh, early detection systems. Uh, the city manager, Mr. Kern, has already done a considerable amount of work. It's clear in what's here. 
So in, this, in the spirit of sense of urgency, we have things available right now. You told everybody in this audience that there is a system that can be employed immediately by the police department. Engage it. There is a system available. Mr. Kern, your phrase was in the can for reverse 911. Take it out of the can. Have it available. That's, that's immediate sense of urgency. And then we have, because of your good work and the tests that's been done, we have a backup old warning system that worked fine for decades in the city. Everybody knows that. They heard it at noontime. We have a chance to bring it back to life for a modest amount of money. So there's three things right there that can probably be done in a short number of weeks, not months, maybe even days in a couple of these things. Furthermore, I heard the fire chief say that it's possible we can extend the uh, system using fire vehicles. So it might be even better uh, in terms of the high-low frequency mm -hmm. concept. So there's urgency. In the background, if you must vote, which I encourage you not to do, but if you must vote, vote for one of the two siren warning systems that are here. You guys know better whether it should be two or three. You've hired experts. They know. You understand the rewards and the risks associated with that. So a sense of urgency can be addressed by this council with sirens and with the supplemental pieces. One additional thing which exists today, it's free, it's exceptional in terms of the data that it can provide, is Nixle. It's talked about all the time. Our mayor is a great proponent of it. He mentions it every chance he can get. In spite of that, there are still a huge number of people in this city who do not know of it. It's amazing that you can go on to Nextdoor Calistoga or other social media sites and find people who are using computers and or cell phones, yet they don't realize that Nixle exists. So I suggest that the city council approve a small amount of money to do a Nixle awareness campaign. Bring people into the beautiful center at the high school. Have classes. Go to Rancho de Calistoga, go to Chateau, de, uh, Chateau Calistoga, go to where people can't easily uh, be transported, and do simple education courses. If you need volunteers to do that, I'll volunteer to teach. All it comes down to is helping people understand how to download an application onto their phone or onto their computer. Not only does it tell you what's going on, it tells you what the specific issue is. It gives you alternatives if they exist. And for those of us who don't, uh, who might live in Calistoga but don't work here, if I'm in Santa Rosa at work, Nixle tells me there's a problem in Calistoga. I don't have to be here. I know exactly what's going on. I might know that I shouldn't take petrified to come home. Invest some time in educating the citizens of this city how to take advantage of a free, free, extremely versatile product. And oh, by the way, it comes from the government, so we don't have to be, worry about being spammed or getting sold something while we're utilizing it. It's an excellent service. Last, and I'll shut up. Early detection. Many people have brought up early detection. It's an, it's an excellent idea to investigate, uh, but it is probably the one area where this council and people in general have the least amount of knowledge and expertise. So I would encourage you to investigate early detection as a independent initiative, not as part of some attachment to a proposal from a company that's looking to piggyback it on top of a cellular solution. The IT solution is not free. It is not free. It comes by virtue of the fact that IT will be receiving years, perhaps decades, worth of revenue from cellular companies to subsidize their gift to this city. So if you're going to go down that path, 
I encourage this council to independently open up a set of hearings and investigations on early detection technology. The speaker, two or three in front of me, right here in front of you, pulled up an app on their phone suggesting that there is technology available free again. So that's it. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Yes. Is it possible for the city microphone? Is it possible for the city to develop even a, a website or a, a site within their site or the fire department site that when you know you hear the sirens go out and they don't have to say Michael fell down at Calistoga Inn. They can just say medical aid and the block number of not even the address but in that uh, what you're in the 1100 block of Lincoln. It just gives them an idea of where the fire is going. Maybe you're going through, you know, a site that you can look up if you're curious to know what is going on in the town. Get people used to that. So if there is an emergency, they've already got it queued in to look and create a buddy system so that they adopt an older person that isn't technologically up there um, to help if there is a huge emergency that this is what's going on. Like he says, the Nixel says the vehicle accidents, but they don't always come out about the town part. And so you would, it would just give you an idea. Um, I used to track the fire calls for the newspaper for a couple of years. And so it, I never put in somebody's address, never the outcome, just medical aid here, um, traffic accident here. And then the people that are curious to know what's going on in our community would know how great a fire department we have um, and how much time they are actually out on calls doing stuff. Um, and maybe the same thing with the police. They don't have to put all the, the petty stuff in, but if there's something important, you know you can go there and look and see why, why are emergency vehicles rushing them? Why are these sirens? And especially with the fire season, you hear sirens, you're looking around going, what? So maybe a site in, in the site or in one of the sites, it just kind of adds to it for a little bit to see how it works. An extra page in there, and you, once you get it locked in, you can use it on your phone anywhere. And you have the Nixle, mm -hmm. too. But I know it didn't come out until late. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Cindy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring it back to the council. And yes, well, I, I said I'm going to bring it back to the former council member, Jim Barnes. Mr. Barnes. Jim Barnes, 1710 Michael White. First of all, I'd like to thank all of you up here, the staff, council members, for a fantastic job on a very, very tough uh, problem. And I'd like to thank Mayor Canning, even though he isn't here, he's off in the Galapagos petting turtles, but uh, that's where he is. Uh, during the Tubbs fire of 17, I was serving on the city council. After the fires were out and we began to take stock of what had happened, resume our lives, and to face our PTSD, of which this community suffered a lot. The two most frequent topics I heard as a sitting councilman were, number one, where are our sirens? Why didn't we have sirens? And when can we get them back? And the second topic I heard the most is, we need better and enhanced cell phone coverage. It was spotty. It was unreliable. It was non-functioning. I had no way to get information. Uh, the gentleman that just spoke about Nixel, I think your proposal is a fabulous idea. To have the city put on some symposiums, put on clinics, make everybody get Nixel. Fabulous system. But anyway, I heard these two topics over and over again. So as soon as we could, we set the wheels in motion to replace our former fire system. The three of you that I served with up there know how we did that. Uh, you all will remember the first five or six months after the fire were very stressful, very chaotic. Uh, we left the cell phone issue sort of off on the side because we felt that market forces could probably solve that and we had bigger fish to fry and it was really not in our wheelhouse. So as the staff report points out, we began the signal process, our siren process in early 2018 working with Napa County OES. By mid-2018, 
we were approached by Illumination Technology, IT, and started a dialogue with them. In early 2019, we tested some proposed sirens, but they failed to meet our needs. I don't remember the exact date, but we turned on some sirens and half the town never heard them. I don't know what happened. What was that? I, I know I was home that day and I never heard them. Uh, they just weren't effective, so that system, whatever it was, was it's told to go away. By the summer of 2019, this summer, IT's proposal was ready and many public presentations were held, as well as presentations to local service organizations. And if it had been adopted, it would have been rolled out in early fall. Um, as we all know tonight, it was not adopted. Uh, it will not be rolled out in early fall, and we are nowhere near where we should be. I was an early proponent of the IT system, and I still am. I believe it is our best and most feasible opportunity to protect this town, its property, and its lives. It is necessary it's absolutely necessary for this town to have protection and early warning. And I fear we may have fallen into some bad habits around here. Uh, I fear we may have fallen into some nimbyism, some internet pseudoscience, and some chat room theorist conspiracy theories. I think we need to rise above that. We need to look at this objectively as a community that needs to protect its property and its citizens. By losing the proposal from IT, we have lost the following. State-of-the-art warning sirens. State-of-the-art 24-hour detection systems. A system with a full maintenance agreement. No one has mentioned that tonight. All of these systems have to be maintained, looked after, watched out. IT's proposal would do that. We have lost the potential to upgrade our cell service on our terms, not the tele telecom company's terms. We can now, if we had taken IT's proposal, have control what telecoms come in here and where they are going to put their new systems if, if, and that's a big if, if they choose to come here under this proposal. And finally, we have lost a system that is valued at $660,000 paid for by the provider. Uh, the same gentleman that I cited before, I disagree with you. I think it is a free system, and I think it will be maintained by IT. But that's just a, a question of semantics, how we want to approach it. This system would have been ready to go. So tonight we are probably going to be choosing between two or three far less comprehensive systems and alternatives. And we will be giving, given the privilege of spending somewhere around 175000 of our money to do that, to put these inferior systems in place. People around this country, and you know, there's a hurricane going on, people around this country have state-of-the-art warning and detection systems in place for tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, tsunamis, and even some are getting earthquake. Shouldn't we, as a community, have the best available system out there, which I think IT's is? Shouldn't we be leaders and not followers? Shouldn't we remember Coffee Park and Paradise? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Jim. Uh, so what I would like to do is bring uh, the conversation back to the council. Um, I will still give the opportunity for the public to comment, but I would like to kind of get a sense of what the council uh, wants to do, uh, try to come up with a plan of action, and, and then uh, give you the chance to perhaps comment on our plan of action. So I'm just I, trying to Excuse uh, me. Are, yeah. you, are you okay with a brief recess here? We're going on two hours. Um, 
I rather keep going. Hmm? We rather I rather keep well, going. Yeah, if someone needs to take a break, you know, in one of the two rooms that are adjacent, okay. you know, I think that's probably appropriate. Yeah, yeah, I, I want to keep this going. All right, so All right. we're we're kind of in the thick of this. So, um, uh, Gary, do you want to lead us off and sure, try to I'll, uh, distill this and yeah. uh, let's kind of come up with something that's well makes sense and moves us forward uh, the IT proposal notwithstanding we need to do something and we need to do something as soon as possible I think that the alternatives that were laid out here in the staff report uh, number one is to uh, be back on with the county to use the uh, sirens on uh, law enforcement vehicles to uh, to go through the neighborhoods I think that is something that we would do anyway even if we had the IT proposal I think there's always going to be uh, a need to bring attention to something and certainly a patrol car going down the street uh, with that might cause somebody's uh, catch somebody's attention I don't know how uh, effective sirens are going to be in a high wind condition if the winds howling through town 60 70 miles an hour like it did when the tubs fire happened you don't hear too much other than a roar and um, so that I, I think that's something supplemental that that helps out I think repurposing the old siren up on uh, Mount Washington I think that's a great idea it's something that uh, uh, I, I think we should move forward on uh, the standalone warning sirens um, uh, I would think that putting three of them in uh, would probably be the optimal uh, system uh, the early warning issues that came up with IT's proposal um, regrettable that uh, uh, that facet is uh, has gone away at least for now um, I'm not sure that the state system that uh, was talked about I don't believe those are staffed 24 7 are they Steve I think they're just when they get a call that there's a fire in a certain neighborhood they focus the nearest camera on it so they get an idea of how bad it is so uh, while you you know there there is that that system out there uh, it doesn't actually detect the fire uh, they don't have people like up in the lookout towers to uh, to do that uh, so uh, I, I think that's a good tool and um, the other thing is is that I don't think an individual with a cell phone app has the ability to focus that camera I think that all comes out of the uh, uh, Cal Fire dispatch doesn't it okay so uh, while it's a good suggestion uh, and it certainly is something available to folks it's not you know the best thing since sliced bread it's better than whatever so um, cell phone towers uh, interestingly the demise of the uh, old lookout towers uh, I don't believe that they man the lookout tower up on Mount St. Helena anymore. It's not there. They took it down. I know the one that was over off uh, the other side of Berryessa burned down in one of the fires over there. Uh, I know that uh, uh, I, I think there's one uh, down in Marin County that's manned by uh, volunteers. But the reason why those fire lookouts became obsolete is the fact that so many fire calls were coming in from the cellular phones long before the fire towers noticed the smoke so um, I guess that's an argument for cell phones um, so uh, I'd like to see uh, alternatives one two and three uh, to go forward uh, under alternative three I would like to consider the three siren proposal um, and I also would like to see if we can uh, work with uh, illumination technology 
to uh, do whatever swap we can arrange with sirens with them if they still be agreeable to that um, in addition if uh, IT uh, has some kind of a proposal in the future that perhaps uh, involves a uh, early warning system uh, perhaps involves uh, uh, an AM radio station on a cell tower someplace you know something uh, along those lines then I, th I think that's another subject for the City Council to consider and would encourage them to to bring that on in and I, I think one of the ways we got into this thing is is with IT uh, is the conflict of interest issues that come up with the mayor being involved in it uh, and consequently we weren't able to discuss it perhaps uh, on the council level uh, freely because we didn't we had uh, Chris here I have never actually seen a full or any kind of a written proposal maybe someone else on the council has other than they wanted to put in five cell tower sirens and the uh, early detection system so I you know I, I never had that in front of me to look at it to see exactly what was uh, in that perhaps uh, other folks uh, have seen it um, but I haven't so that's how I see it is uh, the first three alternatives and alternative three with with three sirens because of the optimal <coughs> sound saturation uh, that we'd get from it one other thing about cell towers uh, uh, councilman uh, Williams mentioned about getting a uh, cell tower ordinance or telecommunications ordinance uh, going here in town and I realize that isn't exactly what we're here to speak about but I would support uh, doing something along those lines and as well so okay uh, Don yes I want to uh, express appreciation to everyone who uh, has offered comments um, on uh, different viewpoints here uh, I very much value that so I've received as I expect our other council members have um, close to a hundred comments um, about this uh, proposal regarding the um, illumination technology uh, the overwhelming majority of the comments uh, were not in favor of going in that direction um, and so I want to be responsive to that and um, they, were, they were running about 10 to 1 against the uh, proposal such as it was nor did I uh, Gary see something solid but as it was outlined uh, the public that spoke to me close to 100 people or wrote to me uh, were opposing it by that ratio I like the idea of course of number one getting those sirens going in the cars and I think we're nearly there and I like the idea of number two that is um, uh, replacing that um, existing uh, the old siren it was loud and when it was on the fire station you, you almost couldn't be in on the street without you know losing your hearing there um, and I I'm uh, prepared to um, agree to um, new sirens as well I'm thinking to test that or to get that um, old one operating it sounds like it can be up and running fairly quickly and I totally support that and then once that's operating um, seeing what the need is as uh, afterwards we may need two or three or or maybe none we just don't know until that um, old siren is operating and I'm prepared to approve additional sirens beyond that one uh, if if it shows itself to be insufficient uh, for alerting uh, the the entire town and the environs so I would be in support of number one and two and number three if it's deemed appropriate after the, uh, uh, the old siren is uh, tested Iris? Uh, yes um, uh, 
Also, I want to thank the community uh, for their um, uh, comments and for being here and discuss these uh, kind of problems. Not only this time, but I wish in the future when other issues come up, uh, we can get the participation of the whole community because this is the only way we can take, uh, try to take the decision that it will be uh, okay for everybody or, or at least try to get a balance. Um, I agree with alternatives one and two and um, in, and also three uh, as soon as possible, but I don't discard the idea to get uh, more information with um, IT uh, for early deten detention. Um, if it's not with this company, maybe we can get um, another one where will be no issues regarding a uh, conflict of interest. But I just want to mention one more time, as a residents and citizens here in Calistoga, we all, one way or another, have conflict of interest when something comes out because if anything happens in the street, it affects us. So or we have businesses, so you know, we participate in the community. So in general, we all somehow have conflict of interest. So um, let's move forward and get the sirens uh, as soon as possible, but don't discard the idea of um, early detention for not only for fires, but any other disasters. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I too, I support uh, alternative one and two. Um, my question, Mike, is uh, if we were to, uh, you, you said IT, they have one siren that's been purchased, or we're not sure if they have more, because I know they were planning for four towers, so I would assume they have perhaps have purchased four sirens? I believe their proposal was for five in total, four here in the Calistoga area, and then one up by Mountain Ranch Road. So, I mean, what I would want to know is if those, if there's a shorter lead time and if those are the right sirens or, or high quality sirens, and if we can purchase those sirens, uh, whether it's, you know, one, two or three, uh, we can put them, get them up, put them on wood poles, but then uh, we still could continue to perhaps work with IT, get more information, get the public involved. That will take more time. Uh, and I'm assuming that if we ever did go with something with IT, that the sirens could be relocated and repurposed to some different tower at some different location. And of course, there would be a cost to that, but as one member of the <coughs> who spoke uh, put it, I mean, we're talking uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars. Um, much of that cost is going to be in the cost of the siren, not the cost of the wood pole. So it's not like we're spending good money after bad. And if we're saving lives and making the community safer, uh, it sounds like a pretty good deal to me. So I'm concerned about the immediate, you know, the immediacy of addressing the concerns and coming up with uh, a very simple action plan that's just gonna take care of us for this season. But ultimately, I think we want the best system uh, that we can possibly have and with the technology that's available to us. There's no question that we are in the crosshairs of um, a s potential serious, you know, wildfire event again. That, that's a real pr possibility. So I kind of think we're all kind of saying the same thing. Um, so if we, if we can talk specifically about alternative three, it's about purchasing sirens and whether it's one, two, or three, uh, let's get them up sooner than later. And if there happens to be a, a PSPS uh, event in the very near future, then I would pursue renting sirens and get them up here so we know we have them. And I would just build that into the ne negotiation of the acquisition of them shouldn't even be a cost, do it for free. So address the, the, the immediacy of this season, but at the same time, let's work towards a longer term plan that makes the most sense. 
So one step at a time. The uh, we're all okay with putting up the new no putting up the old siren as soon as possible. That's a no brainer. Yeah. And how fast, Mr. Kern, could that happen? Do you think? Real world. So, so one of my mottos is under promise and over deliver. But you know, I'm I'm not going to say for sure. But I think it's probably in the three plus week range. And for that type of an installation, it would be with the backup generator and it would need to be manually operated and then ideally we would have it hardwired to the power supply that's up there and there's a possibility that we can also connect it to our remote control system um, at the wastewater treatment plant where that could be activated remotely so we wouldn't have to run a body up there and, and throw all the switches Steve is the uh, quick call to tone still available that used to set that siren off and and that would be the easiest way to activate that it would be activated on the fire department's request or the police department's request just call down a uh, Cal Fire in fact we could even have I think we do have an encoder do we not so that we could encode our own tones here in here at the dispatch center um, just in case Cal Fire was down I think that's the backup So the activation may not be a, as big an issue as provided all that stuff is still around. Three weeks is good. That's a good time frame. So, so three weeks for the old siren. So let me ask, what do you think yeah. about getting that operating, seeing how it works, seeing how effective it is in the outer reaches of town? before deciding whether to buy one or two or three additional or, or zero conceivably. Do you think that makes sense at all? Would you, but, but or, or would you want to go ahead right away, <coughs> I, e even not? I would just put my money on mm. that we're going to need more than one siren. Mm. I would rather have more sirens and less sirens. I mean, I would, I would say I'm comfortable with two, mm. you know, the old siren and two, two new ones. Um, I can go three, but I think, uh, if we want to okay I'll be yeah. comfortable with two okay you know, if I'll go with two new ones and the old one okay because I, we, I think we need to order or they need to order them because it takes time for right you know so it's rather better yeah, to start I, I know, it right away respecting the urgency that many of the, much yeah. of the public brought up and I hear you saying uh, so two? I could go with two okay Irish that's fine. I, I think we need at least the two, and I would say that once we get it all in, test it. And then if we need a third in there, uh, that's what we do. Yeah. But um, I, I just have a fear that, that uh, uh, we have some kind of an incident where we need to do an evacuation and mm -hmm. we don't have sirens in place and someone comes on and says even if nobody's hurt or killed and someone comes on in and says i didn't know that we were going to that we needed to be evacuated until i saw a glow in my back window and uh, then have some smart attorney come on in and say how long did you know you needed sirens to notify people you know there's that possibility too so uh uh I, I'd say move forward with all deliberate action. And, and, and Mike, I would ask if we went ahead and purchased uh, two sirens from uh, the original whatever company that you were working with, I'm assuming that any siren could be attached to any other tower at any future point in time. Like it doesn't have to be the, the specific siren that IT was recommending. Uh, I'm going to say that that's probably correct. Yeah. It's... So it's the, it's the location and you know some of the pre-planning right. eff effort. Okay. Um, and I also think that the Nixle um, suggestion of somehow getting mm -hmm. some uh, some meetings, you know, some education. Uh, I think that's the, the newspapers mm -hmm. could really help out with that. Um, so does that cover everything at the moment? 
And my, my other comment regarding IT, like I really want the experts such as Chief Campbell, you know, CAL FIRE, like people who really understand this stuff. Like we just learned some new information tonight about Mount St. Helena and cameras. And, you know, we, we don't want to uh, duplicate efforts. And, you know, I, I would like to see staff and the professionals, um, you know, sit down and try to bring IT back to the table, but we got to go, you know, we need you to, to dissect their proposal and the benefits and at some point in time, bring it back and get the community involved. I mean, that was, I think one of the biggest problems with this whole thing was process. Like they're just, I, I thought the pro, there was a breakdown in process. People became, you know, suspect and uh, there's a lot of misinformation that like you mentioned, you never even saw a report like with the, in, I never saw any details so yeah and you didn't either so I also um, hate to put more work on you too no I don't We're, you're paid to take work from us but um, uh, one of my favorite things is the AM radio station so if we can uh, get a price on that uh, or or the licensing procedure um, you can contact uh, Sutter County OES uh, or uh, the City of Yuba City Fire Department. Both of them worked on the uh, AM radio station proposal over in Sutter County. They could give you an idea of what you'd have to go through and who has the equipment. So, uh, Mike, are you clear? I think so. So let me recap. So alternate. Alternates one and two are no-brainers. Move forward with that. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead and plan for two sirens, and I'll say that the locations would be consistent with what was in the staff report. So we'd have one at Public Works and one at Greenwood and Grant, somewhere on that north end of town. Um, then take a wait-and-see approach to what happens, whether or not we need a third one at the pool. Um, move forward with the Nixle education, regardless of, I mean, that's just a given. The the notion of IT continuing to look at their process and, you know, their um, proposal with the understanding that if they do come to fruition, that the, ta the sirens could be repurposed and relocated onto their facility um, and possibly additional um, based on what they had proposed on a full build out. But that'll kind of be a not an urgency, but just an ongoing discussion. We will explore the AM radio uh, concept and what that would take. And then as a homework assignment, um, evaluate what would be the, the vehicle to bring forward a telecommunication ordinance. And my, my guess is that that's gonna be several fold and it's not gonna be an overnight process um, we're going to need to involve the Planning Commission and that's where this is a land use issue that's where that's going to start I'm going to suggest that the the effort um, be implemented by staff with um, significant concurrence and assistance by the City Attorney's Office and that we roll it out just like we do any other ordinance and and not you know get bogged down in a in a community advisory group because I think we'll go nowhere fast on that. I, I just have that feeling. The yeah. public would have input in the public hearings, both at the, the uh, planning commission Correct. level and then at the city council level. And and, and this Same wouldn't be would something be that we would, you know, put on the fast track. We would have several meetings at the planning commission level. We'd have an introductory meeting with your council prior to the introduction of the ordinance. So I would envision at least three um, bites at the apple here. And then my recommendation would be um, that you adopt a resolution um, doing a budget adjustment for an amount not to exceed $100,000. That'll get us for the, the two sirens plus the installation of um, what work we need to do at Mount Washington. And then if we do need to put in a third siren, we would have to come back for a third uh, adjustment at that you point. You could make that adjustment to the proposed... <clears throat> Yeah, is there a resolution res that was is there a, res is there a resolution uh, yeah. over just yes. okay. 
So you, we just make the so the the, the resolution you would adopt a resolution as presented by staff um, with a budget adjustment and an amount not to exceed a hundred thousand dollars. Everything else would be the same. Okay. So I'm looking at the contour maps here, uh, if, uh, comparing two sirens and three sirens, um, and the, the two siren sound contour map, even without the new, no, even without the old siren, covers the town pretty well. Um, and so could you keep in mind also the possibility of um, relocating the old siren on the firehouse as well in the two contour map? Um, right in the center of town, it, there's a little bit of weakness, and the um, the old siren might fill that gap pretty well. The, as you look, as you consider where to put that uh, <coughs> that old siren, you know, maybe keep that uh, firehouse as a possibility. It, it's a possibility, but the three-week window gets bigger. Okay. I I, I would think that the old siren on the water reservoir uh, might replace the siren that's down at the corporation yard and then do the swimming pool and the I, I don't know just well, do your best let figure, let, figure let, it out let yeah. the experts figure that yeah. out yeah, yeah. that's, that's why I'm going with you know what the sound study that we did yeah. said public works and green Grandwood and green okay grand and I know I, I pretty much know what that answer is going to be um, if I start moving the, the people on the chessboard, things are going to get wonky. Right. Okay. So I think we have a plan. Um, I, I promised the, the public, um, if, if you have a problem with the direction we're going, uh, now's the time to speak up. So come on up to the microphone. Yep. Hi. Hi. I'm Stephanie Woods. And um, I have a business in town, and I, you know, love hearing all of this. However, I live on Old Toll Road, and um, I'm concerned about being able to hear the sirens. We cannot get a landline on our road. I have called everyone, um, and I do not have AM radio in my car. And so I am... I'm sort of, and I have spotty service. I have Verizon, which has only um, gotten worse since the fire. So I'm just concerned. I want to know exactly, you know, if we have two sirens or what IT's distance would be. Um, and I'm just not sure if, I'm just concerned for my family. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you have any answers or, because I'm, <laughs> sort of at a loss if I don't have a siren then I don't know what how to far do. up old toll road do you live I'm not I'm not up the hill I'm well the old sirens gonna be mounted up at the on top of Mount Washington I'm not sure where Mount Washington is. it's it's the water tank it's by Solage oh okay yep it, it's right there on Silverado Trail okay and it's gonna be probably pointed Right it's, over the it's mobile home park. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's 360 yeah. degree. Okay. Yeah. It's loud. And okay. we're going to test it. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hi. Yes, Cindy. I live out past Bennett with a hill between me and town. Depending on the which way the wind's blowing, I could hear the siren just fine over that little hill. I can hear sprint races. Like their motorcycles going down the road, depending on which way the, ra the wind's going. My girlfriend can hear them in Deer Park, depending on which way the wind's going. So I think it will carry to where you are, and that's when it used to activate at the at the firehouse. Um, it's very loud. You don't want to be underneath it. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Barnes. Uh, as I said before, I was a proponent of the other system, but I believe that what has been accomplished here tonight is, is very good. One thing did disturb me. The use of the phrase, that should cover the area fairly well. That bothers me. If two covers it fairly well, spend the extra 30000 buy three, and cover it very well. Thank you. Good point. I have a question if I might. Yep. Um, 
So with the placement of the two tower solution, or even the three, right now, would that be on uh, through the use of non-routine encroachment? Is that on city property? Uh, the two towers that we're talking about would probably be city property. So because I'm the city, I do get to do things a little differently than an applicant might. Um, the public works location is fee title property. Um, so I grant myself the right to build on Greenwood and Grant area. It would be within the public right of way. And since I own the pub, I control the public right of way, I can grant myself the opportunity to install that. So, and if you were to go to the third tower solution, that third location is at the pool, and I own that you property. You own that as property, well. right? So, two of the three properties are city owned, right? Correct. So, if IT were to come back into play here, they wouldn't be able to use those locations that were city owned, correct? They wouldn't want those locations. They they have specific locations that it's a grid system that. That's how it works. So, so we'd be it, spending the money ourselves first to put them in, and then yeah. they would be spending their money to move them to where they wanted them. Is that or we just renegotiate whatever, and maybe they reimburse us, or if okay. that ever happens. Okay. But right now, we're just trying to deal with an immediate solution. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm all in favor of the immediate solution. Yeah. Three towers, get them up, let's go. You know, I think it's great. I was just curious about the process. Okay. The other, next, not more, it's more of a comment than a question, is with this early warning fire detection system technology that IT has and is offered, um, isn't that something that the county would be involved in as well? Why is it just Calistoga that, I mean, why is it the same lane? Why, not, why aren't? So, uh, it's, a great, it's a great question. I think they are making pitches to other municipalities and, and perhaps the county, and that's why I would like to keep that conversation going. Put, let, let's have the experts, you know, who, yeah. who know what's going on with Cal Fire and what everybody else is doing. Let them come back, and if there's a proposal to be made, Bring it back. Perfect. Oh, yeah. That may involve more than just the town, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah okay. for sure. Thanks. Yep. Martha McCoy again. I appreciate um, moving forward with the sirens. I didn't hear any opposition to three towers, and I'm not sure what the reason would be to only have two if that's what the city manager was proposing for the best coverage of our town. To go ahead and fund that now. Thank you. Diane Barrett, Centennial Circle. I agree with what Mr. Barnes had to say. Do the three. You can test them tomorrow and they're going to be fine. What are they going to be like on October 8th with that wind? Give us the best coverage you can. It's not that much more money. I'm convinced. Three towers it is. Okay. <laughs> Done. Three towers. Going once. Going twice. I'll go three towers. I'll go three towers. Okay. Well, three right. towers. So, so you've got Done. three. All right. The well, yes, Chief. Yeah. Yes. Right. They're on, they're on, they're on wooden, poles. W wooden poles. O old, antiquated, vintage-looking wood poles that we all love. Combustible wood yeah, poles. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wooden poles, um, 40 feet high. Um, we can provide some schematics if people want to see what they look like. They're 40 feet tall, people. Okay. The resolution would need to be bumped up to 150. Okay. 150. 150 or 175? 150. 150. Okay. Um, I don't see anybody rushing to the podium, so I'm going to close it off to the public. And I'm going to ask uh, a motion to be made. I'll make a motion that we adopt the attached resolution with the dollar amount modified to accommodate a three-pole siren system, as well as a repurposing of the old fire siren. And that number should be about what, Mike? 150,000. 150,000. 150, That's a well-stated resolution, and I'll second it. Okay. Okay, so we have a, a motion by Councilmember Krause and a second by Councilmember Williams. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for showing up. It, we do appreciate your time and your comments. 
Okay, we'll move on to item number 12 so we can all get out of here. Uh, this is receipt of the 2018-19 grand jury final report on Napa County water quality. Do you want some it's water? a matter of taste and authorization of the city of Calistoga's response. Good evening, Vice Mayor, Council Members, Mike Kern, City Manager. Um, Thank you. Every year the grand jury, the civil grand jury, um, identifies something of importance, um, either on their own volition or through public comment that they receive. Uh, this year they focused on water quality uh, throughout Napa County. Um, if you'll recall, um, many agencies within the Napa County area derive their water from the NBA. Uh, that's water that comes out of the Delta near Rio Vista. It's pumped up through the NBA pipeline, the Barker Slough Pumping Station. Um, for Calistoga and for the city of St. Helena, they, we contract with the city of Napa to treat water, the raw water, and then it's conveyed through uh, pipelines up to us. In addition to NBA as being one of our water supplies, we also have our own reservoir and water treatment plant at Kimball. Um, the split on water is about 60% NBA, 40% um, Kimball. That varies depending on the, the water year and how hard we want to run Kimball. Um, many of the comments that the grand jury uh, noted, I want to make primarily they found that all of the jurisdiction's waters met or exceeded the state primary drinking water standards. So there were no violations uh, found in any agency's water supply or distribution system, which is a good thing. That's what we strive for. And there are some issues that many of the agencies have associated with taste, odor, and color. Uh, those are secondary standards uh, that are aesthetics only. Uh, they don't materially affect the health quality of the water. Um, but, you know, if it looks a little orange or maybe um, smells a little bit um, off, um, those are what they were primarily focusing on. They're urging um, the jurisdictions to implement capital investments that would address those um, issues and bring the water quality up to a higher perception. Um, you can't treat it any higher than we already do for primary standards, but for the aesthetics part, you can. Um, most of our responses were in concurrence with the grand jury's uh, findings. Uh, we did disagree with them on a few things, uh, primarily the fact that we need to have local control over how we spend our limited dollars with regard to our enterprise funds. Um, for them to dictate that we meet or improve our secondary standards while not taking into consideration the significant expense that we're incurring, uh, moving the water 26 plus miles up valley, um, the capital improvement needs that we have to maintain our system. Um, those are our priorities where we need to be, you know, focusing our, our limited resources, not, you know, meeting a secondary or improving a secondary standard. That's the, the nice to do. Uh, what we're focusing on right now is the must-dos. So at some point we'll get there, and as we um, look at making capital investments and improvements in our system, we'll certainly incorporate uh, those betterments where we can, um, provided that they're within a reasonable cost and don't overburden the ratepayers above and beyond what they're already uh, taxed with. So you have our um, proposed responses. Um, by law, we need to get this to uh, the foreman of the grand jury and the presiding judge um, by September 12th. So we're asking if you have any um, edits or changes to the responses that we've drafted. Um, and if you do, we can incorporate those and get our responses back to them um, by the end of this week or first part of next week. All the other jurisdictions have responded, with the exception, I understand, of American Canyon. Uh, they're taking their um, recommendation to their council tomorrow night, uh, and then all of the jurisdictions will have um, submitted their responses. We work very closely with our partners on the MBA, so that would be American Canyon, City of Napa, St. Helena, to make sure that, you know, we're all working in our, in our common goals, which is to provide good quality water at a, at a reasonable price. Um, the grand jury did point out that many of the smaller jurisdictions have higher water bills than the larger ones. The biggest driver for that is one for us. We're so far away, we've got a lot of water main to, 
to maintain. We have our own treatment plant. We purchase water from a long distance away. Um, and one of the biggest drivers is the economy of scale. Uh, we have a fixed amount of customers that we can push a lot of our sunk costs to. Um, so that, that really drives our local rate higher on a per capita basis. If you recall, that was a, a very focused point of discussion during the rate uh, studies. When we moved from a certain percentage on the fixed rate to a variable rate, it used to be primarily variable rate. And when the drought hit and water conservation came into play, the enterprise fund took a big hit. So we're now, I think, at like 32 or 33% fixed and 72% variable. Other jurisdictions are 70% fixed, 30% variable. So they're they're hardening their, their finances by not putting more on the, the consumption side. It's more on the fixed side. We're not there yet. I hope to not have to get there. Um, but those are the primary reasons why our rates are higher than, let's say, the city of Napa. It's an economy of scale issue. That's and it. a big lawsuit. And potentially a big lawsuit. And we had a big well, lawsuit. The old, yeah. the old lawsuit. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Mike, have we uh, gotten the equipment installed on uh, Mount Washington and Beige Canyon that's supposed to handle this uh, one constituent problem that we had that residual chlorine or? Right. So, so that, that those improvements have been completed. Um, they were built into the Phage project um, this, through the FEMA grant. And then we grant. added it later to? And then we just we just added it to Mount Washington. I want to say that was completed last fall. Uh, so they're mixers and blowers, and what those are doing is removing uh, the, the disinfection byproduct uh, that's um, created through the reaction of chlorine and the um, naturally occurring organic material in the water, the organic carbon. The chlorine and the carbon react, creating uh, trihalomethanes and haleocytic acids. Um, both of those are measuring devices as to um, how much disinfection byproduct is being uh, formula, formed in the water treatment since, process. Since those improvements have been made, and I know that we are doing more water flushing uh, because we have the water available that we didn't have during the uh, peak of the drought, uh, have we had uh, many or any complaints about discoloration or odor? We, we receive, on average, about 1.7 um, complaints a month. Um, so it's pretty, pretty insignificant. I mean, it's important to the customer that, that's making the complaint. Um, but you know, if we're responding to two complaints a month um, for the size of our system and the number of our customers, I think that's, that's doing a good job. Um, How the, many complaints per month did we used to get? Same or? A, a little bit more, I think. Um, the flushing has helped significantly, especially in the, the outer reaches of the, the system. Um, when when we were getting more complaints, that's when phage was offline during construction. So for you know almost 20 months, we didn't have that water supply. So everything was coming either from the MBA main or from Mount Washington. Um, we didn't have that that local supply in storage that was helping to, to move things around. Um, that corner of town out by Tubbs Lane and, and White Lane tends to be low volume usage, so the water doesn't move through the system as fast as it does downtown. So it gets what I'll call a little bit, the residence time in the pipe is longer. So if you have any um, suggestions on potential edits, we'd, we'd welcome them. And then we'd seek your authorization to submit the, the responses as is or as amended. And you want that by motion? Yes, please. OK. Uh, so. I, I have some uh, suggestions. Uh, I, I am fine with the substance of the responses to the findings. Um, but I'd like to go to finding number six on page five. Um, the, the response begins down the bottom of page five. The response begins, the city of Calasoga partially disagrees. Um, but actually, the city 
it's a small point, but it's not quite quibbling. The city does agree with the finding, and it gives a very perfectly good explanation afterwards. But in fact, um, with the very first clause in the very first sentence, the city acknowledges that the finding is correct. So I'd suggest that the city agree with the finding and then continue with the explanatory note, which, is, which makes a lot of sense to me. And the same, the same comment would apply to finding number eight on the next page, where it says the city partially agrees, but actually the city does agree. And again, the explanatory note um, makes a lot of sense. So I think the partial agreement is, it's a little bit, try, it's fudging a little bit when in fact we do agree with the finding but we have a, uh, a very good explanation to follow. So that would be my suggestion to, to not partially agree or partially disagree, but to agree with the finding and then uh, to continue with the expl explanatory note that's already there because it makes a lot of sense. I also um, have two comments. Let's see, on uh, page seven, number three. I thought your response was very good. I thought staff's response was quite good. And I want to uh, compliment you on that. And on uh, my last comment, is on item number six, finding number six on page eight and nine. Finding or recommendation? Uh, must be your recommendation. Recommendation number six. Yes, that uh, looks to me like a, like an opportunity to employ that um, next door uh, site also. It was a matter of communication and it occurs to me, uh, talking with Charlotte, that next door might be a, might be a way to um, respond to uh, recommendation number six as well. Something to look at. Yeah, so I, I, I think that the discussion on use of social media for mm -hmm. notification is probably a better separate discussion than trying to weave it into That's a fine. response to the grand jury. Yeah. The Nixle uh, yeah. notification is our our adopted policy, if you will, for formal notification, and, and I'd want to stay with that until we have, you know, a, a more lengthy discussion if that's the council's direction. Yeah, yeah I'm fine with that. Um, I, I mean that f internally. Um, I think next door might be an opportunity to uh, begin to respond to number six, but uh, I don't think that response needs to be changed in this okay. case. Great. So perhaps the language on uh, uh, page five, finding six, uh, the city of Calistoga agrees with, with this finding with qualification. Yeah. yeah. And then the paragraph explains our qualification. Yeah. The city, in the very first clause, the city explicitly agrees with the finding. And so, uh, oh, we're qualifying our, yeah. And here's, but here's a further explanation. Maybe for both of those responses, that would be appropriate because it, the way, unfortunately, the way the grand jury makes their findings, it's almost like you're trying to prove a negative or you're fighting a double negative where it's, you know, a lot of things get woven into a, a statement that they make and it's hard to either agree or disagree in, in total um, because they're they're so well interconnected that the nuances for our, the way that we handle certain things are different than somebody else's. Um, take, for example, the mobile home park. While we don't individually notice the residents, they have the op ability to avail themselves with the information from our consumer confidence report that's on our website. And we notice them that that information is available, that gets in their utility bill, um, or it's posted on our website that they can get that information. So we 
that's where we partially disagree. That there, there is that information available to them. Um, it's just not given to them in a hard piece of paper. Um, so we take take a little bit of exception to the to the way that the grand jury says we don't notify them and no, we don't give them that information. We do notify them that the information is available and where to get it. So that that's we're we're dancing on the head of a pin, right? How many angels can you dance can dance on the head of a pin? But for us, it's important that we make those distinctions so that. So that we're responsive, but we're also protective of our system. I think the paragraphs are very good. They're fine. I, I, I wouldn't suggest any changes there. But, but uh, in fact, we do agree with the finding, and 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 here's and here's what else is important for us. So uh, Gary gave some specific language. That we'll, we'll that just add. What we that we agree with the findings yeah. with the following qualifications. Okay, great. That's so uh, we just need a motion and a. In a second on this? I move we uh, adopt this with those changes uh, suggested by Councilman Krause. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Unanimous. So that brings us to adjournment uh, to the next regular scheduled meeting, which will be Tuesday, September 17th at 6 o'clock. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right. <laughs>